Welcome to our 24th video with data structures and algorithms. Let's do an example of optimizing matrix multiplication. So we need a few things. For one, we need a, an a array P that has the dimensions of our uh, matrices. So I've lined them up so that you can visualize uh, whose dimensions are whose. So A1 has the dimensions 30 by 5. A2 has the dimensions 5 by 10. A3 has the dimensions 10 by 10, and A4 has the dimensions 10 by 30. We're also going to need a two-dimensional array, M, uh, that will hold the minimum number of scalar multiplications that it takes to compute uh, the product of matrices I through J. Uh, and you'll see what that means in just a second, but here is the equation to compute each one of these. Um, and then we also have another two-dimensional array, S, uh, that holds the value of K every time we compute this. Um, and what this means is that uh, K is going to be the last index of our first group when we group these matrices together, right, when we parenthesize them. And uh, then we will have the rest of the group parenthesized. And you'll see again what that means as we go through this. So first off, we need to fill out, uh, we're going to start filling out this table, and we will start at the bottom. So M11 would be here, and that's just matrix A1. So how many scalar multiplications does it take to get A1? Well, zero, because it's just one matrix. We're not actually doing any multiplication. So same thing with all of these. Right, so that's pretty easy. So we can fill that bottom row in like that. Next, we've got uh, a one or we've got M one two. So that's uh, multiplying matrix A one and matrix A two. So as we have here. So if we follow this equation, we need to take this and we need to split it up into two sections, right? The only way for us to do that with two matrices is to put one matrix right in parentheses and the other one in parentheses, and as we've just computed, the number of scalar multiplications that it takes to compute each one of those matrices is zero, because it's just one matrix a piece. The other part of this, this P part over here, is the number of scalar multiplications that it takes to compute this whole thing here. And that's basically just multiplying the dimensions together. So the out so the first two, right? So M or P0 and P1 is the dimensions of A1, and then P1 and P2 is the dimensions of A2. So we do that, and we will get uh, 1,500. And then remember, we also have to store K. So that's always going to be this value, whatever this will be in our next um, equations. So that's 1 at this point. So let's record 1,500 up here. So we have 1,500. Let's go on to the next. It's uh, M23 is the next one for us to do. So M23 is here. Now, again, we're trying to split it up into two. So we have A2 and A3. right? That's the only way to split this up. And again, this t each of these takes zero scalar multiplications to get uh, that matrix. So the next one, or uh, the, the actual number of scalar multiplications that take place is right here. It's all the dimensions. Uh, so this is going to be 500, and our k will be 2. So let's record that up here. And we've got 500, and we can find the next value. So now we're going to do m34. So let's scroll down and get 34. Here we go. Similarly to the last two, as you can see, we're going to fill in 0 and 0, right? We're trying to split this up. Uh, there's only one way to do that. So we get that, and our dimensions come out to be, oops, 3,000. And our k value is going to be 3. So we can record that as well. So let's record 3,000 in here. And let's do the next row. So we're going to start off with M13. Now M13 has two different ways to split this up. right? We can either compute 
uh, the product of A2 and A3 and then multiply it with A1. Or we can compute uh, the product of A1 and A2 first and then multiply that with A3. So we need to see which one of these uh, takes less work to do. So M11 is 0, as we know. M23, we've already computed. Let's just scroll up and find that. That was 500. So let's put that in here, 500. And this equation comes out to be uh, 2,000. And so S13, remember, is K. So that's 1. The next one, A12, we've already computed that as well. And that was 1,500. So let's plug that in. That's 1,500. We know that M33 is 0, so we'll do that. And this comes out to be uh, 4,500. And so S13, right, remember, is K. We always need to save that. So we'll put that there. Now, this took two different ways. And which one do we pick? We pick the one that is the smaller one, right? We're trying to minimize the work that we have to do. So I'm just going to mark this one here, and we'll record 2,000 up in our table. Whoops, too far. So 2,000 goes here, 2,000. The next one we need to compute is M24. So let's do that. And similarly, that's going to have two different options as well. Right, we can either compute um, this product, right, of 3 and 4, and then multiply that with A2, or we can compute the product of A2 and 3, and multiply that with A4. So a, uh, M22, you know, is 0. 3, 4, we've already got, what was that? That was 3,000. So we can plug that in, 3,000. And then this is going to end up being... That's 4,500, I believe. So uh, S24, right, we always take K, is 2 in that case. Now for the next one, right, M23, let's go find that value. So M23 is here, that's 500. So we're going to plug that in, 500. And as we know, M44 is 0, so this comes out to be 2,000, which is definitely less than that, and our k value in this case is 3. And remember, we're taking the minimum uh, of these. So let's go record that up here in our table. That was 2,000. And now we have one left, right? We have M14. So let's do that. Now with M14, we're going to have three different ways to do this. Uh, the reason is because we could either group it in this fashion right here, where 2 through 4 is grouped, right? And A1 is by itself. We can have uh, the first two grouped together and the second two grouped together. Or we can group the first three together and have A4 over here grouped by itself. So let's start with the first one. M11 is 0. M24, let's go find that. M24 was, remember, 2000. We just did that one. 2000. And this one comes out to be, uh, let's see, what is that? 900 plus that. That would be, I believe, 24. Is that 65? That's 6,500. So S14, right, is 1. So we have that. The next one, M12, was 1,500. And M34, I think, was 3,000. And <clears throat> this comes out to be a rather large number, 13,500. Oops. Too many zeros. And k is 2, so we're going to set that here. And the last one, uh, m13 was 2,000. Oops. And m44 is 0, obviously. And this comes out to be 1,100. 
or 11,000, I mean, and k is 3 here. So we need to take the smallest of all these, right? That's clearly this one. And so let's re go record that up here. So 6,500 was up here. The right color. And we've got 6,500. So now we've computed this whole table. So what do we do with this, right? We're still trying to optimize this. In other words, we're trying to find the maximal, um, you know, the, the, the optimal parenthesization, I mean. So what we're going to do is we are going to use um, the things that we just found, right, along with some of our, our S values. Um, this one was 60, oops, wrong one, oops. Let's go here. Let's go 6,500. Okay, and what this means is, right, let's start using this. So M1, uh, M14 is at the top, right? It was 6,500, so we need to check to see what S14 was. It was 1, so what that means, again, is that we're going to start grouping all of this um, up until index 1, and that will be the end of our first group. So we'll group A1 by itself, and we'll group everything else, right, into the second group. So we have that there. Next, we find uh, that this was um, S24 was 3, meaning that we group everything from the beginning up to 3, and then we group everything else by itself, meaning that we get uh, this kind of a split here. Right, A2 and A3 come together, and A4 is by itself. And then uh, we split this here, right, and we see that we can have all these uh, leaf nodes if you want to kind of see this as a tree. So what we can do is, i do that again, okay. What we've found out is that the optimized um, matrix multiplication would be this right here. First of all, we want to group A2 and A3 together. So we have A2 and A3 grouped together, right? With that, after we compute that product, then we compute this product right here. We put those together with A4. Okay, we group those. After we group those, right, after we compute that, I keep doing a weird parenthesis. After we group that, then we can multiply all of that with A1 on the left. Right, there's that. And by doing it this way, by parenthesizing this, this matrix multiplication, in this way, we'll optimize or minimize the number of scalar multiplications that we have to do to compute this product.